This week, we're just jumping right into things. We're going to show you how to make this retro gaming title. We're going to utilize Motion 5, but of course, we're going to make the plugin available to you. So first thing we are going to do is we are going to add some text and we are going to go with a font that we've been using in a lot of our tutorials. Of course, it is the retro font. Uh, it will allow us to give it sort of that 8-bit video game look. We've used it in our VCR tutorials and a few other. So what we're going to do is we are going to type in retro and we're going to resize that and position it on our screen. All right, so now we're going to jump into the appearance tab and we are going to turn off the face and turn on the outline because what we're going for is sort of a vector based look like you would see in old video games like battle zone so that's what we want to do there we're going to change it to that kind of green color that you would often see in those kinds of video games and that is looking pretty good all right so what we're going to do now is create the same lettering in a different layer so we're going to do that by duplicating the layer uh, because the next section is going to be gaming we're just going to rename that gaming so what we're going to do is type in gaming and of course we are going to size and position that lettering within the scene where we want it uh, to uh, the point uh, that we're happy with how it looks. So once we've got that all kind of positioned and the way we want it, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to keyframes. So I'm going to put the playhead on the timeline where I want it to end, which is where it currently is, add a keyframe, and then I'm going to go back. And what I'm going to do is change it so the gaming is in the distant background so it's quite small so we're going to make it small and that way when it rolls through it just gradually gets bigger so to create a bit of a different look what we're going to do because we have the gaming coming forward we're going to have the retro moving back so how we're going to achieve that is the same way we are going to keyframe where we want it to end so the exact same point as the gaming and then we're going to scrub to the beginning of the video and what we're going to do is we're going to make the retro really really large so it's going to give the appearance that the retro is coming from off the screen and then coming on to the screen so now what we're going to do is we want to add a little bit of dimension to the retro lettering so what we're going to do is we are going to open up the filters and we are going to utilize echo and what echo does will duplicate the lettering multiple times and because it moves through space it'll give it the appearance kind of that you know the old school rendering of video graphics wasn't the greatest so it'll give it that kind of look so once we get the echo here and drop it on retro uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the inspector and we're going to change the number of echoes. Let's move that up to six. So there will be six subsequent lettering and we're just going to change the decay and the amount a little bit. And hopefully that will give us the effects we want. And if we scrub through, there you go. It gives it that nice little delay. Uh, it has moved it a little bit off. So we're going to have to reposition it here, uh, get it to where we want it to land. So we'll just move that up slightly and we should be good and we'll just scrub through again just to make sure that it's good and that looks pretty awesome so now at this point we want it to give it that kind of 3d retro look like you're on a retro 3d playing field and because that was built with vector graphics if you played games like battle zone what they had was sort of a vector grid so what we're going to do is we are going to create a new group we are going to add grid we're going to go to the inspector and what we're going to do is we are going to change the colors here naturally uh, so what we're going to do is get it so it looks the same color as our lettering i'm just going to organize things so things are on top so you can see it a little better uh, so we're going to go with that green and we are going to 
basically take the opacity out of the black. Uh, that way, if you do put it over something that it won't have a solid black background or you can leave that in. It just all depends how you want to go about things or what you want to accomplish. Uh, we're going to change the background width. We are going to change the background height, but we're still wanting this to be 3D. We just don't want it to be flat on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch up the anchor point. So we're going to move the anchor point of this grid. So we're going to select anchor point. We are going to move that down to the bottom of the screen. If I can grab a hold of that and get that there. And then what we're going to do is we are going to rotate this grid. So what we're going to do is we're going to transform uh, and we're going to select the 3D space. And what we're going to do is we are going to rotate that down just underneath our retro gaming logo. Then what we're going to do is we're going to expand this out to give it a little bit more of that 3D look. In fact, I'm going to drag it out a little bit further to give it kind of that more stretched look. Uh, we're going to expand that out till we sort of hit the borders with the top. And then I'm going to rotate it a little bit further down again. So it's underneath the retro gaming. So that's starting to look a little bit better, but of course that isn't that exciting. It's just kind of a flat background. It isn't doing much. There isn't much motion. So that's what we're going to do now. And we're going to do that by adding offset. So what we're going to do is add parameter behavior rate. We are going to simply type in negative 0.1. And what that's going to do is add some motion to that grid. So as our title moves in, the grid continues moving and that is looking pretty good. So just to get a little bit of a smoother transition as this builds in and out, what we're going to do is go to the behaviors menu. We're going to go to basic motion and we are going to add fade in, fade out. And what that'll do is add a little fade to our lettering. Uh, we're also going to add that to the background. And what that'll allow us to do is have a more gradual sort of build in and build out. You know, sometimes it isn't as nice when it uh, snaps into place. And I think this is a case of that. And it's also going to add that fade in nice for the gaming. So it doesn't just, you know, sort of stick there as a small thing. It just kind of builds in slowly like it's coming from oblivion. And of course, finally, we are going to add that build in build out to our grid. Uh, and that will uh, have that transition in nicely. So we'll add that basic motion again, fade in, fade out, and we can just see that it builds in nicely from there. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if you don't have the plug in or you don't have motion five, uh, we've made that available free for download. Of course, Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share this video. Hope you enjoyed things. Thanks for watching. I want to see you build on this tutorial, add in, and let us know what you've done. See you.